It was that silent night when the stars turned their gaze to marvel at the earth. When the heavens gathered breathless round a lowly stable. When a young mother wept tears of worship, falling on the baby in her arms. And the song of the earth arose in Bethlehem, soft as the tender beating of his heart. And all was calm, all was bright. Yet could this be the same God of Abraham, the conqueror of Israel, this baby? This fragile life. Is this child the one who burned his name in rapture across the gasping skies? Whose voice spoke the oceans into crashing rhythms? Who crafted the mountains into guardians of the firmament? Whose hand ignited the thirst of the deserts and the warring surge of the elemental hosts? Who breathed life from dust? Broke the oppressor's rule? scattered the chains of his people like sand and led them through the wilderness with a pillar of flame. Is this child the one whose presence billowed thunderous on Sinai's peak? Who surrounded Job with the roaring wind, stood defiant in the raging furnace, wrote judgment against tyrants and blazed on the lips of the prophets, scorching history's pages with the fury of his might? this be the same God who chose to come as the vulnerable king, setting his throne on straw and manger, drawing forth the tears of shepherds, receiving the gifts of wandering travelers, his fame unknown in this world. He is Jesus, the one who thunders through the heavens yet whispers to our hearts, who reigns victorious, yet bows to serve the broken. He is God in the fury, God in the silence. He holds this mystery balanced in his hands, holds our questions till they lose their need, until all we see is him. Oh, he. 
Hey guys, I pray you're having just an incredible Christmas Eve. You know, as we sit here and uh, as we enter into such a holy day season, I think for all of us, we have to sit back and go, man, what a different year 2020 has been. I mean, what a unique time in history uh, that we, we're living in right now. We're going to look back at 2020, and we'll never forget how this year has changed the way we do life. I think we'll look back and go, what a wild ride 2020 was. But I want you to think for a second. Yeah, it's changed the way we do life. But what happened some 2,000 years ago in the city of David was the turning point of all human history, and what happened as we contemplate even the Christmas narrative changed humanity once and for all. I want to read a passage to you out of Luke 2. You're probably familiar with it as you contemplate even the Christmas story. But Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8, it says that night shepherds were in the fields outside the village and they were guarding their sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were frightened, but the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that is for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of of David. And suddenly the angel was joined by a host of others, the armies of heaven, and they were praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened. I, I want to I want you to pause right there and contemplate even uh, verse 15. Let's travel back some 2,000 years ago. Let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this wonderful thing that has happened. And I want you to think about this. I mean, it's 2,000 years ago, and we're in the city of David, Bethlehem, Judea. We're there in Israel. And, and what happened all happened in a moment. It would have been so easy to miss it, and so many did. I mean, it came and it went, but in a moment, the miraculous occurred. God became a man. While the people of earth walked around unaware, divinity arrived. The Word became flesh. God became a baby, a human. God became a man. And heaven had wrapped up her most precious gift and had placed it in the womb of a young teenage girl. And it all happened in a moment. Think about it. It was just a normal day for most people. I mean, the noise and the traffic was usual in that little small village of Bethlehem. People were already out on the streets and vendors were on the corners and store owners were unlocking the doors to their stores and shops and the smell of coffee was brewing. And just stop, just stop. Do you hear the sounds? Do you smell it? 
I mean, dogs are barking. Donkeys are pulling the carts down the, the cobblestone. The owner of the Bethlehem Inn, he had been up most of the night. His little hotel was full. All the beds were taken. Every mat, every blanket was being used. He was so thankful. No vacancy. Uh-uh. It meant more money. Last night was a very profitable night for this guy. And it, and, it, and it gets us thinking, what was the conversation like that morning with the innkeeper and his family as they gathered for breakfast? Did anyone mention the young couple that had arrived the night before? Did anyone even ask about her health? Did they know she was pregnant? You know, the girl that was on the donkey was, was she okay? And there was nothing special about that young couple. I mean, nothing. They were just one of many families that were looking for lodging that night. And the interesting thing when you go back and contemplate what was happening is Augustus had mandated that a census should be taken. And they, this had amped up the city. So many people were, were gathering and crowded in. They, they were there for the census, Right. And, and, and life was busy. People were in a hurry. I mean, the bakeries were making bread. People were doing chores. And here's what I'll tell you. It is so easy for all of us to become preoccupied with stuff that doesn't really matter. And it is so easy for us oftentimes to get just caught up into the routines of life that we, we miss out on maybe a God moment. I, I doubt that anyone even noticed the couple's arrival, or I doubt that anybody even wondered about the pregnant girl. Again, they were just too busy. They were too preoccupied with their lives. And there was too much to do. And I really don't think that anyone could imagine, ah, oh, the impossible has occurred here in Bethlehem. But God had entered the world as a baby. And there was a unique scene in the sheep stable on the outskirts of Bethlehem. A very unique scene. As life was just kind of normal and people were doing whatever, I just want you to close your eyes. And just that sheep stable on the outskirts of Bethlehem, I, I just want you to smell the stench in the air. The stable stinks like all other stables stink. The aroma of urine and piles of dung on the ground and the smell of nasty sheep reeks the air. It was a, it was a sheep stable. The ground is hard and spider webs are on the ceiling and this is not a five-star resort. This was a one-star revelation I don't think a more lowly, humble place of birth could exist. And, and it got me thinking, like, God, why did you choose to be born in such conditions? Was God declaring to all humanity that he came to identify with the lowest of all people? I mean, close your eyes, you're there in this sheep stable, you're on the outskirts of Bethlehem, and ah, oh, the smell. And off to one side sits a group of, of shepherds. I mean, they're silent. They're familiar with the smell, yet they are perplexed. They're in awe. They're amazed. What just happened? I mean, their night of watching sheep was interrupted by an explosion of light from heaven, and a symphony of angels were singing, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Think about this. God often visits those who have time to hear him. So on this night, he went to simple shepherds. And, and as we walk into this Christmas Eve, as we walk into this Christmas uh, celebration this year, do you have time 
to hear from the Father. And then you're sitting there, and there's the shepherds, and then sitting on the ground next to Mary is an exhausted dude by the name of Joseph. I mean, he is dozing. His eyes are heavy. Mary and the baby are healthy, and but Joseph's eyes are just rolling. He's exhausted, and he's probably considering the same thing the shepherds were asking. What just happened? I mean, the baby appears to be fine. Mary seems to be safe. What a crazy night. And as he starts to doze off, he remembers the name the angel told him. Jesus, we will call him Jesus, which means God is our salvation. And wide awake is Mary. She looks so young because she is so young. She's maybe 15 at best. And she looks into the face of the baby, her son, her Lord, majesty. And I want you to think about this. At this moment in human history, the person who understands who God is and what God is doing is a teenage girl in a smelly sheep stable. She probably understands and recognizes and is pondering the magnificence of the Lord like no one ever has in human history. And somehow Mary, she knows that she's holding God. She can't take her eyes off of him. This is the promise. She remembers even the angel saying to her, his kingdom will have no end. But he doesn't look like a king. He looks like a baby. His face is tender, red cheeks. He's so innocent. And, and there's so many, even in our fellowship right now, like Hannah and, and Josh just had their little baby, and Rick and Kara had their baby. We got these two little boys just being born, and others have had babies. And, and, and just think about that. Mary is holding God. He's just a baby. He has the helpless cry of a baby. He is completely dependent upon Mary for his well-being. I mean, here he is, majesty being born in the mud, holiness wrapped up in the filth, in the filth of sheep manure. Divinity entered the world on the floor of a sheep stable. He came through the womb of a teenage girl and there he is with her and a confused carpenter trying to make sense of what has happened. I mean, the baby that she's holding had overlooked the universe. He had laid aside the idiot privileges and took on a robe of flesh. And how she's holding God. I mean, these blankets keeping him warm were the robes of eternity. His throne room had been abandoned for a dirty sheep pen, and worshiping angels had been replaced with bewildered shepherds. God has visited this planet. God has come to Bethlehem. The house of bread, the bread of life has come. And the innkeeper would never believe that he had sent God into the cold that night. The religious people would have laughed if anyone had told them the Messiah was in the arms of a teenage girl on the outskirts of their village. They would have laughed. They were all too busy to consider the impossible. And those who missed his arrival that night missed it because... They weren't looking for it. And I think that's where so many people are, even in our culture today. They're missing out on experiencing God, hearing from God, seeing God, because they're not looking for him. They're so caught up into all the different things that have been happening in 2020, and they're not hearing from God. 
And that would be the question. Are you looking for him today? Are you really like open to God speaking to you today? The good news is God became a man. He was born as a baby, as a human being. He was born in extreme poverty to a virgin teenager. I mean, this is amazing as you contemplate it. Jesus Christ was a real person. This is not a myth or just a cool story. God came to earth as a human being just like us. He came into the world like millions of other babies. He was 100% God and 100% man. He was God in human form. And as you study his life, he grew like us. He developed like us. He was tempted like us. He suffered like us. He felt pain like we do. He experienced disappointment. He got tired. He felt lonely. He cried. He was human. And for 33 years, our Savior and our Lord and our Master, that one that Mary was holding in her hands, for 33 years, he would feel everything that you and I have ever felt, plus more. Yeah, he felt weak. He grew weary. He got his feelings hurt. His feet got tired. He got a headache. And to think of Jesus, and this was something that changed me years ago, gang. To think of Jesus as 100% human, it, it seems almost like it's irreverent. I mean, does it not? It's not something we like to do. It's, it's not comfortable. It's easier to keep the humanity out of the incarnation. It's easier to try to clean the manure from around the manger. It's easier to try to wipe the sweat out of his eyes. It, it's easier to pretend he never snored or blew his nose or hit his thumb with a hammer. But there's something about keeping him divine that keeps him distant, that keeps him almost predictable. And I would encourage you, don't do that. For heaven's sake, don't do that. Allow the word to become flesh and dwell among you. Allow Christ the tabernacle in human flesh amongst you. Let him be as human as he was. Let him enter into the mire and into the filth of your world. When we let him in, he can pull us out of our junk and he can rescue us. The good news to us, a savior has born. His name is Christ the Lord. And I pray that you will experience like never before the Christ of Christmas that you will have time to hear him speak to you, I would encourage you, just invite him into your space. Just, just cry out, God, I, I want to hear from you. I want to experience you. I want to encounter you. I don't want to miss the Christ of Christmas. Lord, I desire to know Christ to the full. And, and that's my prayer for you as you walk through this day and as you walk through uh, even finishing up this 2020, I pray that Jesus is real to you, that it's not a myth, it's not a story, but it's, it's the essential, uh, it's the essence of everything that your life is about. Make room for him. Make room for him in your heart today.
Oh 